Hello, welcome to Arvindsini Academy. We are discussing uh, matter in our surrounding and uh, we had discussed in last lecture that uh, there is a change in temperature and change in pressure can lead to change one state to another state. Uh, if we change, increase the temperature then solid will con convert into liquid and liquid will convert into gases. Also with uh, increase the pressure then become solid liquefied and it will turn into liquid and further if the pressure is increased then liquidified gas will turn into uh, gas uh, solid form solidified. Uh, as uh, we have also given the example that carbon dioxide gas uh, turn into a solid ice uh, when pressure is increased. So pressure will play also an important role and temperature as well as uh, play a very important role when in change of state of from one state of substance to another state. And now uh, we will uh, learn how uh, without intervening uh, state that is liquid in between uh, solid can change into gases and gases can change into solid that is called uh, uh, the process is called sublimation. So let us discuss what is sublimation and uh, process sublimation. sublimation. So, what is sublimation? Sublimation, the process in which process in which solid can change into gaseous state gaseous state without changing into liquid state changing into liquid state liquid state and from gaseous state gaseous state to solid state without changing without changing into without changing into liquid state is called sublimation sublimation both the process is called sublimation whether solid changes into gases or gases changes into solid without inter changing into intervening medium that is liquid so uh, the sublimation is the process in which solid can change in gases and gases can change in solid. Let us uh, discuss this uh, with one example and there is one example which I can take here uh, that uh, if I take this let us see this experiment this you can do your own that ammonium chloride powder here I if I put here ammonium chloride powder and it was heated in a china dish then there will be a yellow like gases yellowish gas in between this funnel and this funnel is closed by the cotton plug and uh, this cotton plug will not let them to go out but uh, the temperature at this level and temperature at higher level will be different definitely so there is a ammonium chloride vapor gas here is there this is a gaseous state this is a solid one solid state you know and at this level, level since temperature is decreases so it will become cool and again uh, it will turn uh, here and at this point of uh, at the uh, wall of this funnel it will deposit it and again it will form in uh, ammonium chloride solidified so here uh, there is no liquid we cannot see any liquid in between the funnel there is no uh, droplets even but uh, solid changes into uh, gases and gases changes into solid so both the uh, things happen here solid changes in this uh, experiment you can do in your school uh, lab in sublimation solid, solid changes into vapor vapor and again in solid so what is happen here that ammonium chloride ammonium chloride chloride 
this is in solid form when heated it will change in ammonium chloride vapor that is vapors of ammonium chloride ammonium chloride ammonium chloride chloride vapor vapor state that is gaseous state and again on cooling on cooling here heating heating is there and on cooling cooling it will turn again in ammonium chloride ammonium chloride right huh? so ammonium chloride this is what you have to learn right now so heating and cooling process are there and on the basis of that liquefied the process of turning from solid to gas here solid that one ammonium chloride was solid and solid to gas and then gas to solid again so i hope you got it okay now uh, we will learn about uh, the process in which uh, vapor is can be a uh, can uh, liquid can be turned into vapor that is called vaporization vaporization is the process or evaporation or uh, changing from liquid state to vapor state so let us discuss all these uh, things but before that uh, what i discussed in the previous lecture that when temperature increases solid uh, is basically melt into liquid and the amount of uh, as we had discussed that uh, uh, ice is melt at 0 degree centigrade and but not all substance which will uh, melt at 0 degree centigrade for example aluminium and iron and gold has different melting points so why the melting points are different for different substances actually melting points deal with the strength between the particles what the strength of the particles uh, of that substance strength of particles means the force of attraction between the particles of that substance and the so melting point it basically indicates here I, i'm just writing here melting point melting point of a substance of the substance indicates indicates the force of attraction attraction between particles of particles of substance substance right now. melting point uh, of a substance uh, indicates the strength of force of attraction between the particles of the substance and therefore since uh, different substance uh, is made of different type of particles and their force of attractions are different and that is why the melting point of different substances are different right so as we had uh, already uh, discussed that melting point of ice is 0 degree centigrade or 273.14 kelvin similarly melting point of aluminium if i am discussing about the melting point of aluminium point of aluminium 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 is 660 degree centigrade whereas whereas melting point of gold melting point of gold is one uh, uh, so melting point of different substance are different as we have already discussed that melting point of melting point of an ice of an ice is 0 degree centigrade or 273.14 Kelvin. So this is what uh, uh, melting point of different substance are different and why this is different because the strength of the force uh, of attraction between different substance are different. So that is why uh, to break those strength of force a uh, different amount of Force uh, heat is required, heat energy is required, and that is why a uh, melting point of different substances different. I hope you got it. A strength of force. 
so melting point of a substance indicate the strength of the force and since the strength of the force is different and therefore melting point of substance are different um, this is uh, just an information and i hope you get it you got it how to deal with the melting point of similarly but it is not remember and similarly therefore melting point of different substance melting point of different substance and substance are different are different right now uh, we are going to learn about the latent heat what is latent heat as we had discussed earlier that latent heat of fusion of fusion what is latent heat of fusion that i am going to discuss to heat of heat the amount of heat energy required to change 1 kg of solid substance substance into liquid state liquid state is called latent heat of fusion latent right now so of course this is also the different latent heat for different type of substances for uh, ice it will be different for aluminium it will be different for gold it will be different so different type of substance require different type of latent heat so latent heat of fusion fusion we have already discussed that what is fusion fusion is the process in which solid substance converted into liquid then that process is called fusion so latent heat of fusion is the amount of heat energy required to change 1 kg of substance 1 kg of solid solid substance into liquid uh, state that heat amount of heat energy is called latent heat of fusion atmospheric pressure atmospheric pressure as we have heard and learned that uh, the pressure also play a very important role in change of state so at atmospheric pressure where the uh, amount of heat energy required to change 1 kg of solid substance into liquid that is called latent heat for example uh, as we had uh, discussed that latent heat of uh, is a hidden heat and what the hidden heat happen or in case of ice turn into water the ice absorb this heat so when ice convert into water when ice convert convert into water then latent heat latent heat is absorbed by absorbed by ice without changing without changing temperature without changing temperature so basically uh, in the examples in this diagram you can see there is some ice cube is kept here here there's some ice cube is kept and thus these are some ice cubes which is kept here and uh, heated here with a stove burner in a beaker then what will happen that uh, if you steer with this glass steerer and uh, a thermometer is placed here uh, which touches the ice then temperature of uh, this ice will remain same and ice will turn into water after some time when it is completely converted into water you again uh, see that as soon as it is completely turned into water the temperature of this ice what was the temperature of this ice the same temperature uh, of uh, this water also it means the temperature is not going to change when ice converted into water then the question is what is the heat energy which is supplied uh, to the ice what will happen to those heat so the heat energy a part of that heat energy is uh, taken by um, beaker the particles of beaker to warm up 
and another some part of this is absorbed by ice itself. So uh, that is called latent heat because it is a heat edge, not it is visible. If it is visi it was visible, then in that case what was happen that temperature will rise from 0 degree to 7 degree centigrade. Here the temperature is 0 degree centigrade, here also the temperature is 0 degree centigrade or 273.1 Kelvin, 273.14 Kelvin. So temperature is not going to rise here but substance changes from one to another and heat energy that is supplied to it is uh, expanded in form of hidden heat energy and that is why it is called latent heat of uh, substance. So one question arises that if whenever uh, we will supply, continue the supply of heat energy to the substance, to this water, and this water will turn into vapor. And uh, at uh, 100 degree centigrade, at 100 degree centigrade, water turn into vapor. So when heat is continued, continue to supply when supply of heat energy, supply of heat energy, heat is continue, new, then we find that at 100 degree centigrade, 100 degree centigrade or 373.14 Kelvin, the water turn into turn into vapor water turn into vapor right now water turn into vapor and uh, that is vapor is a gaseous state so this is at 100 degree centigrade water turn into vapor is called boiling point this temperature is called boiling point of water boiling point of water boiling point of water point of therefore we can say boiling point boiling point of water remember this point of water is 100 degree centigrade is 100 degree centigrade so remember this fact isn't it now uh, this method is called evaporation this method is called evaporation more energy than particles of than particles of liquid steam more energy than particles of liquid and similar of liquid particles of liquid has more energy energy than particle of solid than particles of solid this is all because of the heat energy supplied to the substance and even though the temperature is not increased but still the particles of the substance has more and more energy as compared to uh, as compared to solid in liquid and as compared to gas in uh, liquid so this is uh, what uh, happened uh, when heat energy is supplied to it. Now we are going to learn about the evaporation. Evaporation is the process evaporation. So evaporation the process on surface of a liquid, surface of a liquid in which it turn into vapor vapor below its boiling point below its boiling point below its boiling point boiling point right what is happen that when temperature is uh, increases 
then they will break the force of attraction between the particles and they leave the surface. When temperature increases, temperature increases, temperature increases, then the force of attraction, force of attraction between the particles, between the particles, decreases, decreases and the particles are protic particles gets high kinetic energy high kinetic energy kinetic energy and free to move kinetic energy and free to move it becomes it, uh, it uh, will be free to move free to move and hence leave the surface of liquid free to move and able to move the able to move the surface of able to move from surface of surface of liquid that turns into vapor turns into vapor, vapor. right now so particles leaves from the surface and uh, it will turn into vapor because of high kinetic energy they are free to move and they will turn into vapor. So there are some factors which will govern on vaporization and uh, that factors, what are those factors? Let me write here. The factors, the factors on which evaporation, evaporation of liquid depends first with increase of surface area increase of surface area surface area let me write the point here first surface area surface area now we will write here with increase the surface area increase the surface area surface area the rate of evaporation is faster the rate of evaporation evaporation will be faster you can have uh, your own experience i think so suppose uh, something liquid which is kept in a cup right now say tea coffee or anything else if you are hurry then what uh, this if it is turned into plate of plate it will be rate of evaporation will be faster and it will become cool quickly similarly some other food items which is uh, at uh, very hot and if you are hurry and you have to go to school and you want to make it cool then what will happen uh, the, it, it is placed in a bigger plate of a wider range uh, so that the rate of evaporation will be faster and it will become um, slightly uh, less temperature and you will be able to uh, take it so you will be able to eat it so area surface area will play very important role with increase in surface area the rate of evaporation will be faster the second point on which it is depend is the um, temperature so temperature will also play very important role with increase in temperature, with increase in temperature, increase in temperature, the kinetic energy, the kinetic energy of particle increases, kinetic energy of particles 
increases and hence rate of evaporation increases rate of evaporation rate of evaporation evaporation increases that is faster at faster rate right the third point is humidity 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 so when humidity increases then rate of evaporation decreases when humidity increases the rate of evaporation decreases the rate of evaporation decreases decreases and with decrease in humidity decrease in humidity humidity the rate of evaporation rate of evaporation increases increases right one another factor is also depends that is wind wind what wind to play role wind wind that is speed so when the speed of wind the speed of wind increases increases the rate of evaporation also increases the rate of evaporation also increases also increases right so i hope you got it when there is a uh, in cool air or when air is faster or somewhere uh, if you are want to take a cup of coffee and it is too hot then what you are saying you are just uh, blowing air from your mouth so that it become cool so this is a very good example in which you can understood it that when uh, speed of uh, wind is increases the rate of evaporation increases so this is one point which you can take into mind so these are the four factors on which the rate of evaporation depends evaporation cause cooling as also how and how evaporation evaporation cause cooling cause cooling right now the second question uh, which can come into mind that how evaporation cause cooling you will find in summer that uh, some uh, if you are sweating and you sit in below the uh, fan then you will find suddenly you are so evaporation while well, evaporation there is a loss of energy right now during evaporation during evaporation of liquid evaporation of liquid there is loss of energy there is a loss of there is loss of energy there is a loss of energy at the surface at the surface which is compensated compensated from energy energy taken from from environment environment and thus environment thus in surrounding in surrounding of surrounding of evaporation evaporation become cool right now so that is why we feel some cool cooling effect is there right now okay 
so you have find all these things and uh, hopefully you got this here uh, this is your one picture in which uh, it has been said that uh, solid on the fusion it will when solid converted into liquid this process is called fusion and when liquid becomes solid it, this process is called solidification right now solidification is the process in which liquid becomes solid and uh, when liquid become uh, gas then the process is called vaporization what we had discussed it and when gas become liquid that process is called condensation I remember this point this is very important one right now that condensation is the process in which gas become liquid when it is super cooled you know when it is super cooled that is cooled at high level highly cooled and gas become solid without changing into liquid that is called sublimation process and solid become gas without turning into liquid that process is also called sublimation so i hope you remember all these things right now there are few things which you need to learn uh, and keep in your mind that some uh, measurable units although this is not from this topic but this is important that you need to learn because uh, here temperature can be measured in terms of kelvin degree centigrade is the unit which is used uh, usually but the si unit is kelvin so remember this temperature is measured in terms of kelvin and degree centigrade also but uh, degree centigrade is not si unit so whenever it is asked that what is the si unit of temperature you will say that it is kelvin similarly length is measured in terms of meter that is si unit si is what the international system of unit that has been uh, discussed in physics similarly mass can be measured in terms of kilogram weight can be measured in terms of newton volume can be measured in terms of cubic meter density can be measured in kilogram per cubic meter because density is defined as mass per unit volume density of substance is defined as density is what mass per unit volume mass per unit volume and mass is a unit of mass is kilogram and is a unit of volume is meter cube and therefore it is measured as kilogram per meter cube or can be written as kilogram meter to the power minus 3 so this is what we can discuss pressure is measured in terms of pascal pascal was the scientist and on the honor of pascal he has given many theories related to pressure and so it is measured in terms of pascal pressure is nothing else but force per unit area force per unit area right now so si unit is newton per meter square that is also called newton per meter square but this is called pascal pascal right now and shortly represented as p so these are the few things which is important and if you learn it definitely it will be good for you and good for future now there are few things uh, which is given in your book and i have to reply them that what is uh, that why uh, should we wear cotton cloth in summer this is question that why we should wear wear cotton cloth in summer cotton cloth in summer right now this is a question which is raised and uh, we have to understand why cotton cloth is preferred to wear in summer right now in summer uh, generally people sweat and uh, release some water droplets from the skin and cotton is a good good absorber of water so cotton is a good absorber of water since you right here since cotton is cotton is good good absorber of water cotton is good absorber absorber of water cotton is a good absorber of water right so helps in absorbing the sweat which helps in absorbing the sweat sweat 
and exposing it and exposing it to the atmosphere to the atmosphere atmosphere for pg evaporation right when evaporation takes place when evaporation takes place when evaporation evaporation takes place takes place the particles of the surface the particles of the surface particles of the surface surface particles of the surface of the liquid of the liquid particles of the surface of the liquid gain energy from the surrounding energy from the surrounding surrounding right now energy from the surrounding or body surface or body surface and changes into vapor and changes into vapor right changes into vapor the heat energy equal to the heat energy equal to latent heat of vaporization latent heat of vaporization vaporization latent heat of vaporization right now equal to is absorbed from the body is absorbed from the body body leaving the body pool leaving the body pool the body pool. right i hope you got it okay so this is one thing uh, which you need to learn you need to know now there is one more question there is one thing why we see uh, the water droplet on the outer surface of glass containing ice cold water when you bring a chilled water from your fridge and uh, you put into the glass then after some time you'll find that outer surface of glass there is a water droplet why this happen and where it comes from the outside of the water, uh, glass surface because water is inside the glass surface how it comes from outside because that water is not coming to outside uh, there is a, you know there are uh, gas air in atmosphere and that air which is come outside from a glass in contact with the glass and become super cool and then that gas will turn into liquid form so basically air turn into liquid uh, when it come into contact of cold surface of water cold surface of glass so when uh, you can write here so there is what is the phenomena when water is put let me write when when water vapor water vapor which is present in air which is present in air present in air comes in contact of contact of surface of glass surface of glass containing containing ice cold water ice cold water then its loses the energy energy 
in contact in when uses its energy when it comes in contact of contact of cooled outer surface of glass outer surface of glass outer surface of glass glass and hence the vapor water vapor turn into liquid hence the water vapor vapor present in atmosphere present in environment environment turn into liquid liquid which each appear on outer surface outer surface of glass outer surface of glass surface of glass so hopefully uh, you got everything in this chapter and this chapter is completed now you have to learn these things uh, memorize these things and thereafter we will try to solve the questions which is given thereafter and if there is any problem you must bring before me i will answer all those questions and uh, if there is any doubt you can ask it and uh, if there is anything which is uh, you are not able to understood due to speed then please uh, watch this again and again definitely you will be able to get it and in case if there is anything which is still not clear you must write us on our mail or you can ask in class or you can write on send your carriage on whatsapp number which is provided to you so thank you very much keep watching god bless you